coming i think this is uh, very high attendance for a 10 o'clock morning bangalore time conference and uh, we were hoping that you know we start on time so thank you all for who came in early people told me some people were here from 8 o'clock in the morning so i'm sure to avoid bangalore traffic thanks a lot for that um, you know uh, we are doing this ai, AI summit from axel for the first time axel ai summit uh, and i know this is a vc doing a tech summit uh, i hope all of you guys are tech guys. I was very worried we get the right speakers. We have a great quality of speakers, great set of speakers. Uh, please feel free to give us feedback. You know, Once uh, the summit is finished, uh, let us know. Uh, I would like to do this again next year so, so that we can all, and all of us are in the AI community. Uh, you know, uh, so in India, we are, we are no less than the Valley, right? Uh, I would rather have all of us talk about our speakers, our audience, our products, rather than you know, listening what drama unfolds over weekends, you know, who's where, who's not, right? So I would rather have that. So thank you all. Uh, with that, um, I have uh, this amazing uh, responsibility of starting off, kicking off the keynote. I'm going to try it. Uh, I am not an AI expert. I'm a VC. So I'll try to stick to what I know. Uh, and we'll do that. And then we will follow through the day. Uh, so can I have the slides on, please? All right. Okay, so first, uh, this is our WhatsApp group. Uh, currently, this is Axel's WhatsApp group. Uh, you guys can scan the QR code or you can um, you know, catch us uh, wherever. And we have a community of some 300 odd folks, which is mostly Axel portfolio companies and their product heads, engineering guys, uh, tech folks, all of that. So just so you know, a majority of the audience today, 60% of the audience is tech folks, product, engineering, data science heads. Uh, and the tech track is in this room, and then we have a founder track. So the remaining 40% of attendees are in the other room, uh, which will break after the, after the panel uh, discussion after this. Uh, we had 670 registrations for this conference, and we had to say no to 340 people. Okay? Uh, and so, you know, it was very hard to say no, and we, like, I don't know, AI is super hot, so I hope it continues to be next year as well. Uh, so for all of you, thanks. So again, so let me start off with the content. So just a quick intro, what is Axel? Axel has been investing in uh, iconic companies. Uh, you know, these are some of our companies in India. Uh, and we have been doing this globally, right? So you will see a lot of these companies. Uh, you know, we have hun over 120 IPOs. We manage over 25 billion. Uh, but more importantly, we are a, in India. We are an early stage firm. Uh, we do early stage to growth. Our check sizes range from 250K all the way to $200 million. Uh, a part of the initiative, you might, guys might have heard of Axel Atoms. Axel Atoms is our early stage pre-seed program where we invest half, up to half a million dollars in companies. We have invested in 33 companies till date. They have raised nearly $200 million uh, in less than two years. So, you know, I think we are doing something right. Uh, we want to make it into a place where community gets built and where founders can help other founders. Um, so it's a cohort-based program, right? So just with that, and yeah, so the other interesting thing is this time we did an AI cohort, we got 450 applications from AI startups. Um, the not so interesting thing is roughly 40% of them for HR SaaS. And out of those 40%, it was, or 90% were for helping you hire, right? So very competitive market just by the numbers. So those of you are building in that market, so, so you know. Um, you know, so, you know, I would like, you know, if you're do building something in AI, in HR, SaaS, think different. Uh, there are too many competition out there. Okay, so uh, now to the serious stuff. Uh, this is the AI landscape. You know, a lot of times when new businesses come, how do people think about, how, about the space? So the way I think about this is you can break the space into three parts. You have the AI builders, you have the picks and shovels, and then you have the AI users. So the AI builders are the people who are actually doing fundamental research. They're building new models. You know, uh, they are building new embeddings. They are building new sorts of stuff which is used, going to be used by majority of people across the world for AI, right? So yesterday night, Stable Diffusion launched the video model, like text to video model. So a new competitor to Runway ML as an open source. So stuff like that, right? And then these are the trends. So we see the world evolving into a phase where 
we'll have closed source versus open source models. So that just like you have iPhone and Android, just to simplify. There's a whole ecosystem of iPhone, there's a whole ecosystem of Android, and companies are going to build in both the spaces. And we as VCs are going to invest in either of them. Second is small, small versus large models. More and more we speak to various organizations. We get to see, you know, implementing and hosting large models is extremely challenging, extremely hard. Inference speeds are low. Deployment costs are very high. Training costs are very high. Accuracy is low. So people are going towards more smaller models. I am not a scientist, but we'll see how this evolves, right? So we are going to have more specific things. AI explainability, uh, you know, in regulated industries, this is becoming more and more important. Regulations are going to come in explaining how did you give a particular kind of, let's say, loan application approval. Is there a bias in it? So how did we get to that stage? Or, for example, let's say, how are you going to explain the treatment decided or mental, so let's say you have a chatbot which is mental wellness. Right? So how did that particular person, uh, that board give a particular suggestion to somebody? Was it, what if it leads to suicide, right? So those kind of things are starting to become very important. And then obviously inference optimization. I think most of you have been using, uh, you know, you already are using OpenAI, then you will have, you know, API latency, you have network latency, you know. It doesn't work for at scale deployment when you're trying to uh, serve a very large number of customers. Second is picks and shovels. Right? So you, builders have done their thing, now it has to be used. So engineering and product teams need to use it. Right? How do you make sure that engineering product teams don't have to write a lot of code, it is repeatable, it is maintainable, and that they can actually track performance, you can observe everything. So that's where the picks and shovels come into picture. You know, how do you make sure that you have LLM security into place, you know, data privacy concerns are taken care of. All of that is in this bucket. And then we are starting to see how to evaluate LLM outputs, how to make sure things are fine. How, uh, you know, I covered all of this. Uh, most importantly, how many can, can actually LLMs be put into production? So show of hands, how many of you are actually using LLMs in production? Like not OpenAI, right? And how many of you are using OpenAI? So it's a far bigger number today, but I think the world will have to move towards a scenario where we have more and more LMs in production self-hosted. So that's the world, uh, you know, which is going to throw up a lot of opportunities for a lot of startups as well. Finally, we have the users, right? So this is where things get very interesting. This is why ChatGPT blew up. This is where, you know, you use AI to create experiences for customers. You create softwares, new workflows, like new forms of SaaS, new forms of applications. So this is where things are which majority of people are building across the world, right? And, and uh, you know, I call agents the crypto side of AI. You know, we don't know whether it will work, not work, everybody is so much hype, you know, are there use cases, will we ever get to AGI? But agents is definitely something which has caught the eye of almost every uh, AI user, right? And then industry-specific LLMs, uh, as Axel, we have invested in a bunch of industry-specific LLMs and co-pilots. Um, Co-pilots make a lot of sense, especially for high value uh, talent, right? So your CXOs, CFOs, CROs, you know, why, do, why is there so, such a rage about uh, co-pilots for developers? Because those are expensive resources and you want to make them a lot more efficient, right? So that's, that's the other trend. Um, and there's a war which is going on on all of that. And then of course, uh, the first frontier which uh, AI affected was, uh, you know, customer companions and support and customer marketing uh, that's used everywhere. I think uh, that's the thing. The interesting thing is why is this triangle top down? From a VC lens, what ends up happening is if you look in the world today of AI builders, there are very few, you know, you can count them on like your fingers, right? There's a Cohere, there's the Anthropic, there's OpenAI, Stable Diffusion, Runway Well. It's like, you know, it's in tens of companies. Whereas the picks and shovels are going to be, let's say, a few hundreds, you know, a couple of hundred companies, 200 companies and tooling and the like. Whereas the AI users are going to be thousands of, tens of thousands of companies. So that's why that, that funnel kind of is inverted. And that's where the competition is also like that, right? And that's why what you will see is it's very hard. But if you can get to that position, and I would love to have more companies from India in that position. If you look, get to that position, you, you're essentially sitting there like Google search. Anybody in consumer business, anybody in SaaS business basically pays a Google tax for search, right? You, everybody's going to use your products. So the more lower down you are, the more money you make, right? And you become a lot bigger company. That's the, that's the whole genesis of this. But, um, and, and today, by the way, so that's why VC funding today has gone 79% to the AI builders, you know, the mega rounds which are happening. Of course, it is expensive, but hey, everybody's like, can, I, can this be the next Google search I'm creating where the next 20, 30 years, I'm just going to sit and make extra normal profits of it. 
So um, when you're building your AI business, there are a bunch of key choices which you need to make. Uh, one is essentially profitability. So, and we will discuss that in detail. Positioning, and this is a problem with majority of uh, Indians, Indian uh, startups, which is fundamentally the fact that we are great at building products. We are all engineers, we've been trained well, we are great at building products, but we don't know how to market. I'm being very honest here, right? I'm very candid, right? So, and please understand, by building a product, you don't build a company, right? You have to build sales, you have to build marketing, you have to go and get the mindset of folks. Um, so this is where positioning comes into picture, right? So, and there are two positionings in inside AI, which is one is how are you going to win against the Microsofts and Googles and open AIs of the world, uh, which are going to take, come on nibbling away at each of your uh, products, right? And second is, you know, you have the next VC funded startup, which is going to again compete against you. So you have to be very un careful in how you position yourself. Third is the moat. Uh, in US, you know, when I meet companies, they have, okay, this was the head of research at Microsoft Speech, this was a person who was uh, 15 years of PhD research. We don't find, unfortunately, that kind of talent today in India. There is, but that talent is not like coming in uh, and starting their companies and they are not part of, uh, they're more part of academia rather than being part of startups. And that's what we need to break. So that moat is hopefully translates into tech and that is super important. Uh, product UX and workflows are super, like people, you know, people sometimes, uh, all of us are engineers, so people think we have, I have a great tech product which is much faster than anything else. I have an N log N where somebody has N square uh, kind of uh, speeds. Doesn't matter if the user can't use it, right? So you need to have amazing UX and we have done much better as Indian startups in getting to there, but we still have a mile to go. Uh, you know. And then finally data, right? Proprietary data. So data sets are going to be king. Uh, you know, data sets, you know, Reddit went dark. Um, a bunch of things, but as Elon Musk is fighting for nobody to sc scrape on X, right? So I think all of those things just tell you data is becoming even more important in the AI world because that's where you, that's the fuel on which everything is built. So jumping in, these are VC slides. Um, this is your typical SaaS business. Uh, you know, your customer pays you 100 bucks. You have some sort of infrastructure and support costs, which is your AWS, uh, which is your, um, you know, uh, call costs for supporting the customers. You make some 80 rupees, 80 dollars in gross profit. Uh, when you use AI, it falls significantly, this gross profit today, but the customer is not going to pay you extra money for the same use cases, right? But yes, you have to use, you have to give them AI, otherwise if you don't give them AI, then somebody else will uh, provide them AI, right? So that's where you have significant drop. So the question is, will the customers pay more? And these guys are charging very high. Plus you have to spend money on LLMs. Right, so this is where your LLM ops cost comes in. With this, this is closed source. When you get to open source, uh, you know, your payment to AI builders falls dramatically, but there's an increase in your LLM dev DevOps costs. And that's where you have to train people. Do you have the right talent or not? Do you have the right LLM guys? Do you have the research level hires if you want to do inference optimization and things like that. And, and we have funded companies which are going after this market and helping companies do this better. So what is the answer? Oh, things have moved. So what is the answer? The answer is basically, you have to figure out how to get 20 extra bucks, 30 extra bucks from the customer. Either give new use cases enabled with AI, which a great example of that, I think, I, I didn't think this was possible, but a great example, Microsoft is charging $30 per user per month for their Office 365. I'm like, I don't pay anything for my office, but they are charging $30 extra for that. So there is some merit to that. And that is the pricing power they can exert if you are building good use cases. So that's something I can't suggest. All the entrepreneurs in the room, all the founders in the room had to figure that out. Finally, this is the last slide. So what do, uh, last section. So what do VCs look for? Uh, there's a whole bunch of things which we want. Obviously we want all our companies to be tall, dark, handsome, beautiful, smart, you know, like 10,000 things. Um, you can look at, but fundamentally you, you can summarize all of this into two parts. Um, so the TAM, are you going to be a big company? And growth, can it be? Very, become a big company very fast. Those are the two things VCs look for. This is what VCs love, right? These are the various companies which went from $1 million ARR to like $100 million ARR in a very short span of time. So just, and a lot of founders ask me, you know, what is a good TAM to be like? So how do you think about a TAM? And this, let's just, it's just maths actually, it's not rocket science. So most VCs are looking for a billion dollar, or let's say you want to be a billion dollar company, and then today's multiples on SaaS are like seven times. 
of revenue. So that gives you a number of 150 million in revenue. Now put in that at the time of IPO, some public market investor has to underwrite your company. And he is coming in because they are going to say, we want a 20% IRR on this, right? Which basically means they are going to come in for next three to four years, you need to have a 20% IRR, which leads to a 2x of revenue in four years, which is 300 million revenue. So to create a company, when you come to me or any other VC, they're looking at, hey, can this company create a 300 million revenue in 10 years? That's what we are trying to find. Fundamentally, that's it. That, that's the maths. And if you reverse that, so how does it lead to TAM? So assume at that time you'll have 10% market share, so 3 billion in market share, and assume a 20% growth rate for your market. So it should be like a half a billion dollar revenue pool today. Okay, that's what is for most traditional markets. Markets like AI, which are very new, where you will see markets are growing like 1,000, 1,000, 10,000 percent a year. This maths will, so that's why you fi find frontier investments happening in newer areas. But that's essentially, this is the rough maths going on in everybody's mind at the time of meeting com companies. This is a very popular rule uh, in SaaS companies, which is rule of, uh, I've modified it, uh, which is three triples and two doubles. So the maths is very simple again. If you grow your company 300% three times and 200% two times, within five years from $1 million, you cross 100 million ARR. So this is the second maths on growth, which we try to look for. And companies which achieve this are darling of all the VCs and they get huge amounts of funding and valuations. Finally, this is the last slide. Uh, so this, uh, you know, just to simplify a lot of founders in the room, what is it, if you were to make it down, make it down to a checklist, this is a checklist. If you are a pre-revenue company, you know, most of the time you will get funded because you have an amazing team and your market size looks great. And as a founder, you have to sell that vision. That's it, right? But the moment you get to like making some revenues, then the quality of revenues, where are you going to be positioned in the market, that kind of starts working out, you know, it kind of figures out, okay, hey, as you grow bigger, is this revenue really defensible? Show me your net re retention ratio, show me customers are not leaving you out, all of that comes into picture. And then finally, once you start hitting the big leagues, people need to know that you can continue to grow like that without burning too much cash. So that's what efficiency is all about, right? Yeah, so uh, sorry, I had to go through this very fast. So thanks for this, um, you know, and please enjoy today. Uh, this is the first time we are doing this uh, and we are open for feedback. Thank you very much.